this is 100% a workable basement. This will do nicely. Nice tall ceilings, like, you know, eight, 10 feet. Just figured I'd do this real quick, otherwise I'm gonna forget to do it. The unloading of the stuff is going very well. The unloading uh, is, we're nearly there. I'm just down to the, all the heavy stuff. And then right now this whole bay belongs to Hidden Light. All of the stuff that I need to, maybe not that I need, but that I choose to use to make friends. So uh, yeah, it's going great. Got everything moved here. Took us about 30 hours of driving. No big deal, piece of cake. <laughs> Oy vey. So, when you can't find contractors or people to do the work uh, in a timely manner for a reasonable amount of money, what do you do? You do it your darn self. So, uh, hi, my name is Matt and I'm a drywaller now. Uh, notice I didn't say I'm a good drywaller, but I can put up drywall. Uh, <laughs> I've been forgetting to like do videos of this thing, this remodel as it goes because I've been too busy doing the stuff myself and I'm out of practice. I used to do videos with you guys all the time and recently, obviously, it's not really been the case. Anyway, here's a quick update. Uh, the studio, as it looks right now. Whoosh. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> ah. There is a plan, there's a method to the madness. Uh, computers and printers over here Staircase to the real world, sinks, enlargers, chemicals, plumbing and wet stuff over here. Uh, so we'll kind of have two sides to the studio, which is something I've always wanted to do, but there won't be like an intervening wall in between. You just walk to the other side. Those of you who visited my place in Flagstaff may remember the ridiculous number of doors and wonky angled corridors. That will not be the case here. Anyway, I should probably get back to this. Uh, it's gonna be great to see this when it's all done, which for you will be seconds from now. And for me is hours of days, of weeks, of endless manual labor. It's good. Uh, yeah, onward. Just did the second epoxy pour on the new sink. I've learned some things about using epoxy since the last sink that I did, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's still curing and leveling, so it's not quite there yet. Uh, and it won't be perfect, but it's got this cool, like, wavy pattern and high gloss finish and a much better drain than the last system. Oh, look at that. Cool. So, uh, yeah, progress. Plumbing is in, sink needs to go in once it's dry and that takes three days. And then we're almost ready. Need a printer. That's like the last thing we're really waiting on, which will happen when it happens. It's happening. So I'm very excited. It's to the point now where I can come down here and putz away and do stuff, fix this, you know, install the lights for an afternoon, whatever. So anyway, for you, this whole video goes pretty, pretty fast, especially because I haven't been shooting any of the actual process because I've been doing the thing. Uh, for me, it's months, but we're getting there. Thank you for sticking it out. Thank you for being patient with me as I get all this figured out. Whew. Hooray, hooray.
We are finally back in action. Welcome to Hidden Light, the Indiana edition. Three months ago, when we moved here, almost to the day, actually, this was a completely unfinished basement. Concrete floors, no walls to speak of. Uh, so for the last three months, Monday to Friday, nine to five, I have been finishing the basement. Walls are up, floors are in, plumbing's done, electrical's good. I moved in. I don't quite have the finishing touches done and I'm still calibrating. So I'm just this shy of being able to offer workshops and being back in full-time print production, but we're close. I have a brand new Epson P9570 printer, which it turns out is not compatible with quad tone rip. So I'm having to relearn the digital negative process for machines that are not QTR enabled. This is a good thing for you because it means that moving forward, I will be able to teach you <laughs> once I learn it, how to do digital negatives on any printer, regardless of whether or not it's an Epson, although we still prefer Epsons. I have been diving down the rabbit hole and to my current understanding, we still like to use Epsons, one for their um, ABW advanced black and white mode, and two for the fact that their ink set still blocks UV better than Canon's. So we're still sticking with Epson. I'm an Epson boy, not because I want to be, but because I must be. Um, aside from that, everything is more or less the way that it used to be. It's just a smaller space with no retail to keep me distracted. So I can just continue on living my life, being a printmaker in the basement where I belong. We're so close to getting back to full operations. And uh, I figured I would give you a tour of the space and it's like 80% finished current existence. I've left off most of the finishing details and the place is still a mess, but I'm calibrating, I'm working on it. We are making progress and we're so close. So we'll give you a quick tour and then um, <laughs> it's now officially time for those of you who want to do workshops, let's start getting stuff scheduled because I'm almost there. And if you've been waiting to order prints, um, yeah, like I'm so close, let's send it. You know what I mean? By the time you see this, I will be like less than a week away from being able to just offer prints again, like normal. <sighs> so exciting. So let's give you a quick tour of the space. It's smaller than the last one, so easier and faster. Shrink. So, um, workspace. We have the computer, which is in actually a very dark area. And then we have the brand new printer, the 9570, which is a 12 ink monstrosity of a printer. Uh, I have shelves full of accoutrement. We have a brand new eight foot sink where I've been doing my calibration. Uh, since we're in the basement, everything is overhead. So uh, please ignore the fact that whoever built this place did a crazy, ridiculous job with the HVAC, didn't bother doing the insulation. Uh, the plumbing is super weird, but it works. And that's all that matters. So this will get slightly prettier over time. We have the small 40 by 50 inch exposure unit. The silver gelatin darkroom will be this side. So I have like coating and stuff. We have one enlarger set up. I have another enlarger set up. It's not uh, another enlarger that's not set up yet. And then this will be our proofing wall and will also be a wall for me to project silver gelatins onto. So uh, large and in charge. I am a platinum palladium printer, so we still have platinum prints. And then we're back to the start with the uh, workspace and then the big exposure unit, the four foot by eight foot one, uh, which is, yeah, dude, like we're, 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 we're on it now. We're cruising. I have been calibrating like crazy. I have stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of these images that I've been working with. It's finally happening. 
It feels so good. It feels so good to be back, to be ready, to be printing again after three months of doing hardware, you know, like three trips a day to the hardware store plus uh, flooring plus HVAC plus plumbing plus everything that I've been <laughs> drywall. Um, yeah, it feels really good to be back in action and ready to roll. So if you have reached out to me in the last three months and I said, I'll get back to you, expect to hear from me shortly. And if you have not been reaching out to me because you've been waiting for me to show you that I'm finished and ready, the time has come. Let's make some prints. Let's do this. I'm excited. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I should probably get to work calibrating. See ya. Thank you.